Hi there, I'm Annalie McDonald, otherwise known as Nasty Grandma. I'm here to show you how to artificially inseminate your dog. Uh, we artificially inseminate for different reasons. One is for health, if we don't want sexual contact between two dogs, or the other is if we're uh, breeding two dogs that their size don't match. Because there's a lot of time that they're just a little bit off and there's times that we really want to reduce the size of a dog and so we use a small male with a larger female. We don't ever go the other direction. <laughs> Never do a big dog with a big male with a small female. That's, that's dastardly. <clears throat> and I'm going to show you the setup here first. Um, and uh, the first thing is to tell you that I get all of my supplies except for thermometer from either Valley Vet or Revival. And those are both online shops and very good. And um, I'd love you to patronize them because they are, they are paying attention to what we need as breeders and giving us some really good stuff. Um, first of all, I have Extender. This is a milk byproduct. It's made with milk product and is very gentle with sperm. It's not a spermicidal and it's not going to kill anything. <clears throat> it's going to give us more medium for the sperm to swim in if they, if you're only collecting a small male and you want to inject the semen into a larger female. This will give the sperm more medium to swim in and increase our success rate. I use this in a, a water bath and this is like a baby bottle warmer, um, it, but it's specific for labs. So if you look in Valley Vet or Revival, you'll see that they have this sort of warmer and it is for a lab. We keep this in, in there. We want it to be at 38 degrees Celsius, which is about 100.5 in Fahrenheit. So we've got that going and we want that to be warm enough to uh, match our sperm sample that we collect. Next I have rubber gloves. I put those on to protect the, the female. I, I, they're not, I have intact skin so nothing's going to transfer to me but we don't want to get introduce any germs into the female's vagina so we use gloves for that portion. Um, I use a thermometer and it's just a regular digital thermometer that will run through hot cold and give me an accurate reading. I'm going to test the sperm once I collect it and then I'm going to match the extender with that same temperature. Here we have a syringe. Once we've collected we're going to draw up <clears throat> the semen into the semen and the extender into this syringe using a pipette. When in doubt, use a longer one. You can always go shorter, but you can't go longer. My favorite pipette is this guy. And you can see a, the reason for that. And let me show you the difference in these two. This one has a blunted end, but it's got a straight shot straw. This one has a rounded tip and it has tiny little holes in it. And the importance of that is that um, it will, you can't get semen backing up. Once you've injected it in, we can take the syringe off and add a little bit of air to clear the syringe. And I don't have to worry about semen coming back on me. I'm doing a small female today, so I'm going to use just small small syringe, but you'll notice that I have to put my thumb on it when I remove this syringe to get air. You'll notice that happening. And then we clear it and get all the semen out. But when in doubt, do use a longer one rather than going short and, and not reaching the cervix. <clears throat> um, to collect the semen, we're going to use a really pliable collection bag. Valley Vet has the best. This is satiny, smooth, and flexible, but it is really strong. I'm going to roll it down and only give myself, I know that the penis that I'm going to be working with has come about to there, so I'm going to give myself that much space. I put my right hand in, if that's my dominant hand, which it is for me, and I'm going to make a little place for his penis to be in there, and then I can 
pinch and hold him and assimilate a tight vagina and collect that way. If you leave it with so much hanging down here, you're going to collect all over up in the bag and you will have wasted some semen up here in the upper portion of the bag. So I like to get it so penis is in about this far so that I can see what I'm collecting, but I'm not wasting any up in the larger body. So this just roll down. This is something I've learned over time the hard way and then put the fingers in and then penis can just, just enter like that and I've, I've got the control. So what we want to do is let our male and our female just get a good sniff of each other and, and see if they're interested. Our male is uh, sniffing, licking and actually trying to mount a little bit. This is Cinny and Brickle. And Cinny is cocking her tail to the side and that is called flagging. So we're ready to rock. I'm going to get this on my hand. And for this little guy, he doesn't have much of a penis. So we're just going to continue taking some of that up in there and thread it over my fingers so that we've got a short amount. So I can catch his penis and keep semen contained. So I'm going to let him mount her and then I'm going to grab his penis and then I also get up behind his bottom. See if he's ready. Okay, now he's fully engaged and all I got to do is hang on. You can see just I've just got my fingers back behind the knot that he makes. <laughs> and when he ha is fully not finished ejaculating but pumping he'll turn around swing his leg over and he'll think that he is butt to butt with female because his knot would be stuck inside her hips I'll show you what I've got here I've got his penis and then the knot and my job is to just keep my hand around the knot to assimilate the uh, female's vagina as she clamps down. It's kind of a natural reflex that she has and she clamps down on him and just hangs on. So his job is just to pull away a little bit. If they're naturally tied, uh, he would be pulling away a bit <clears throat> and so would she. This particular stud continues to pump with his body. Some do not. And we're going to just get collect semen over the next five, six minutes until the knot goes down. So as you can see, we're just getting a tiny start there. You can see milky looking. There's a little bit of pre-ejaculation fluid, which is clear. And then ejaculation is milky. And then there's post -ej so here we are coming to the end of, it's been about six minutes and you notice that we don't have just milky here. We have a little bit of maybe orange tinge. That's a few blood cells. It doesn't hurt a thing. That just means there's some place that he's rubbed himself raw and a couple of blood cells making their way down to the semen. And I'm just waiting for his knot to diminish and He's still trying to impress us with what a big wiener he has. <laughs> For such a little dog, he's only three pounds and that's a plenty, plenty of goods. So he's kind of bored with the whole deal. He wants to lay down. And our girl has started taking a nap too. So <laughs> you can see nobody's too anxious about this. And he is just almost finished. I can feel just a little bit of a change. 
and his the knot will actually just decrease and here it goes I can just feel it changing in size and there's no knot anymore and so there's nothing to hang on to and he can just slide right out and we'll just make sure he gets it put away and Mm -hmm. And then we're going to put his little belly band on him. That's why he has such a weird haircut. But this is how we have studs in the house. They're good citizens. We put a little pad in there and put a belly band on, and he's good to go. He's not going to mark anywhere in the house, and we've got a good stud. So I'm going to use just a little bit of extender. I would say I have between two and three mils here. And I've kept the extender warm. And what I want to do right now is check the temperature of the actual collection. Um, when it takes that long, it can cool just in the air. So I'm not at body temperature anymore. So I'm just going to check the temperature of it. Placing the tip into the semen. And it's just registering low, which means that we are below 98.6, which is a human body temperature. So I'm going to put just a little bit of this extender that's warmer up above where my hand is. I'm going to block it off. I'm not going to let any go down yet. I'm just going to put about half of that, which, which is a couple mils, just two is plenty. And then I'm going to check its temperature. And it is 98.8. So just a little bit more than what's in there. So I'm going to just let a tiny bit dribble down at a time into the semen so I don't shock it. If it's too hot, it'll cook it. If it's too cold, it'll freeze it and it will stunt the sperm. Um, we check our dogs fairly often to see how much sperm they're carrying, how much they're giving us, and also the quality of it. Just see that it's mixed. I'm going to grab the syringe. Thread it in all the way down. And then I'm going to bring it up just gently. Okay. And then I'm going to take about three mils of air in there as well. And that's to clear the tube when we're complete. That means I've got to use my pipette just at a straight angle in order to fill it so that we're ready to inseminate. I'm going to sit this here, put on my gloves. And now we've turned the female around so that we can get this end of her, the business end. Uh, we've shaved enough so that we can really see our target here, but I'm going to give her a little bit of KY. And the KY is the same as people would have, only it's cheaper from the vet supply. I'm going to check to see my pathway. First, I'll go up toward the spine, and I can feel that that goes up probably about an inch, and then flat, and then down. And I can't do that just with my finger because she's really pretty tight, but that's the directions we're going. And when after we've gone up and across and start to go down, we're going to stretch her feet out, which gives us a straighter, flatter target. So she's going to think this is just really strange. I just go really slow, gentle. And I go till I feel some resistance up toward her spine, and I'm going to go forward. Now I'm going to pull her legs back. 
and that gives me an easier target. And that taken about, it's about three, three and a half inches in. And I'm close to cervix. I know I'm feeling resistance in there. Not pushing hard, just feeling the resistance. And then all the way in. I'm going to put just a little bit more air in to clear the tube. I can see I've got some in the tube, so I'm going to pull back and give me a couple mils of air and push it in. And you can see I've cleared the tube. Every drop counts. So now we want to keep the girl at an angle, maybe 45 degrees. Uh, we want them comfortable, but we do want them to be in this position. It simulates what they would be like if a male were inside her and ejaculating now. So we give her 10 minutes with her hips up and then put her little panties on in case she's kind of drippy and then we've, we've got her. Then we count 63 days and that's when she's going to have puppies. Uh, what? Yeah. We're careful not to let them go pee afterwards. See, she's got plenty in there. She's dripping a little bit even now but we don't want them to squat and push it out. So especially sitting is not great. Laying down for a little while is good, so we'll, we'll take care of her. We gave her plenty, but we have sperm swimming around in there and gonna do their job. It only takes one per, per egg, and our objective is to inseminate her often enough during her cycle that we hit every egg that she drops, so. <clears throat> We usually breed on day 9, 11, 13, or sometimes not till 10, 12, and 14 after the first sign of blood. Thanks for watching. Hope this helps.